Okay, I just checked the computer and it said that it had landed. So I looked out front and sure enough, there it was. What we have before us here, this box. This box? This box contains the next project. It's a bit of nostalgia, much like the helmet, helmet build that I did last month. But this one, this one creates its own challenges. What do we have here? I actually built one of these back in the day when it was new, the first edition, like in the 70s, just being a little boy. And here, in the 90s, they reissued it, but it's the classic, yeah, there it is. So we've got a lot of fun plans for this one. First thing I noticed is cover art is very different than the original. The original was more cartoonish, but this just feels like its own reimagining. Let's see what's inside. What's inside. Ah, there it is. There's the familiar, familiar crocodile shape. Oh yeah. So I've been reading that some of the detail is a little lacking in these areas. You could get resin kits at one time to enhance the texture. But I suppose if you're creative enough, you could do it other ways. <sighs> this, is, this is neat. This is really fun. Wow, that's neat. It's a little commemorative thing. comes with it. It's kind of small, but it looks neat. Collector's thing. Fun. What else do we have? This is one of the projects right here, the engine. You see how it's just molded gray plastic? My vision is to dremel out the base of each one of those engine openings. Install a grid of this translucent material and then illuminate it from behind with some LEDs that flicker. That's my vision. So that'll be one of our little projects we do. Then there's the landing bay issue. This just needs a lot of work. You gotta drill out all the little holes on the side there where the vipers launch. You gotta do that for sure. You need to cap off the nose because it should be closed off at the front. And then back in here, I'm going to put in little blinking landing lights and a mural that shows the Vipers ready to lift off. It's going to be fun. That looks like it's more or less all here. I'm hoping it's all here. You never know with these open kits that are old. Some kid might have tried to put it together and gave up and dropped something on the floor. That's alright. I'm creative enough. I can make whatever's lacking enhance it overall. So this is the beginnings of something wonderful. All my supplies organized. Plan on coating it with this aircraft gray tan. And then I've mixed up a custom gray wash. There it is, the, the BSG mix. This gray I plan to wash over into the recesses of the texturing and then wipe it clean with a fresh rag, giving it a stained, weathered appearance. And then once the decals are applied, if I don't just paint them, um, certainly the lettering we're going to want to use. Unless I change the name, I'm considering making it my own thing, you know? Like maybe one of the ones that peeled off during that big Cylon attack. I'm feeling like this is the Nechbet, the Vulture. Or it could be the Tsobek, which would make sense since it's crocodile shape. So once the decals will be applied to the model, we want to finish it with the dull coating. This dull coating takes off all the sheen so the hull is nice and flat. It also seals the decals in and glues them on better. Well, I gave it all a thorough inspection and it looks like all the pieces are present, which is really encouraging. One less thing to worry about. We got the moon shaped base to support the model when it's finished. Front nose section accoutrement. We got the thruster array. 
rear hydrogen tanks, the two landing bay hangers. So the first thing I do on a model is uh, I inspect it for any sprue flashing like this here. These little tabs where it was mounted and molded. And I just like to shave them off with a little razor. It makes building the model much easier. If you have all your parts pre-cleaned and ready to go, inspect all the pieces. See, like here's a little casting flash there. You just razor it off. Just, just slice it away. Just like so. Bye-bye. Yeah, well, no big deal. That looks good. And then once all your parts are prepped, You've trimmed away all the casting flash and the sprue remains. I like to give the pieces a nice bath in some soapy water. Just to clean off any mold release agents that might still be present and could interfere with a, a satisfactory paint job. So, I make sure that those are good. Here's a little snaggle tooth, see right there. So you want to just clean that up. Just take your razor there. And just lightly shave off these things that shouldn't be there. You can also um, file them with a little micro file if you prefer to do that. Some people fear the razor because they might dig into the surface or something, but I'm really not that worried about it. If I see that it's uneven when I build it, I'll employ a little filler. Just some Bondo. Be your little bondo on, it'll be fine. Hey, 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 hey. There's another sprue thing. Be tricky not to mess up these fins. Like I say, it's a model. It's about the journey and the destination too, I suppose. This will be fun. We're gonna get started on that pretty soon. Anyway, if we could approach these cutouts, we could either um Take a little Dremel burr, like one of these little ball things, and burn it out, chew it out that way. That might be the way to go. You could do that. You could also just slice uh, the back part off with the cutting wheel. Or you could take it over here and just buzz it down with the sander, you know, just make it go away. So there are many options. I'm going to try the Dremel first. 